two films that have come out recently that I really like that both have directors who come from a writing background are Molly's Game, written and directed by Aaron Sorkin, and Wind River, written and directed by Taylor Sheridan. Of course, both these films have incredible dialogue and really compelling, well-developed characters. But what both these films lack, in my opinion, to a certain extent, especially when comparing them to films that these two men have written but have been directed by more seasoned filmmakers, is visual storytelling. One of the things that I noticed right away when watching Molly's Game is how reliant it is on dialogue. Of course, Aaron Sorkin is famous for his style of writing quick, snappy dialogue, which is definitely on display here hours a day every day you're gonna stop paying me to do that job because i'm making too much money doing my second job and if i say no i'll lose both jobs because it doesn't seem fair this is bad right now but as previously mentioned the thing that was lacking in this film was showing there was a lot of telling in this film but not too much showing i think it's pretty obvious that a great script is beyond important when it comes to making a film but that's not enough because you also need a great director who is able to convey the words and actions seen in the script in an interesting way and in a visual way. Let's look at a scene from The Social Network written by Aaron Sorkin but directed by David Fincher. In this scene, the dialogue is great as usual, but something that really stuck out to me that words cannot achieve is when Andrew Garfield grabs two beers out of the fridge, one for him and one for Mark, and without knowing, Mark goes to the fridge and grabs only one beer for himself. That is such a small but crucial detail that shows us so much about their relationship and serves as a foreshadowing of things to come. Moving on to Steve Jobs, written by Aaron Sorkin, but directed by Danny Boyle. One of my favorite things about the filmmaking decisions that Boyle made for this film was to shoot each of the three acts using different cameras. The first act was shot using 16 mm film. The second act was shot using 35 mm film, while the last act was completely digital. This is something that creates a better sense of immersion, but also separation between the three acts of the film, and something that the script alone cannot do. Final example is Moneyball, written by Aaron Sorkin and Steven Zalian, and directed by Bennett Miller. Look at this short exchange between Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill. Hill's character is the younger and less experienced of the two who is put on the spot by Pitt's character. The uncertainty and pressure on Hill is expressed through the camera work as the handheld camera slowly moves in on the face, Notice that he's the only one in the frame to further isolate the character, while this shot of Pitt is a lot more stable to show his dominance. Also notice that Hill is in the shot and that Pitt is positioned higher than Hill to further emphasize that he's the bigger man in this situation. This level of expertise in blocking, camera work, and the choice of cameras is not nearly as present in Molly's game. All three filmmakers that I just looked into show certain things to us in a very subtle way and use dialogue as a part of that process, while Sorkin seems to rely a lot more on the dialogue. He does show us certain things visually, but it is far less subtle and effective as it feels inorganic. Look at these inserts that are used to help explain the game that we are watching. Yes, it does help, especially for someone like me who has no idea how poker works. But in my opinion, this could have been conveyed in a much more subtle and simple way that would only require talented actors like Jessica Chastain and all the others at this table to do one thing, react. When watching poker scenes in Casino Royale, I had no idea how the game worked but I was so compelled because of the reactions and facial expressions from Daniel Craig and Mads Mikkelsen. How each move affected these characters was all that mattered, which is why this bit is one of my favorite parts in Molly's game. Now let's look at Sheridan's Wind River, especially how he directs a set piece. I will be specifically looking at this scene, which I think most of us can agree is one of the best scenes in the film, and how it is crafted through tension building and also foreshadowing. But before, let's have a look at some of the set pieces in films that he wrote but didn't direct. The most famous set piece from Sicario, written by Sheridan and directed by Denis Villeneuve, is of course the border crossing sequence. Now there's already an incredible video on YouTube by one of my favorite channels, Cinefix, on how the scene was crafted. But basically what I'm trying to get at here is that they keep telling you that if they were to get ambushed, it would most likely be at the border. Now be careful on the turnaround. If the Federal is a shooter, it's gonna happen on the turnaround. And this piece of information is something that sticks with us throughout the entire sequence, which along with the brilliant cinematography, score and editing, creates a sense of unease within the audience and of course the characters themselves. The dialogue is just as important as everything else when it comes to crafting the tension in this sequence. It's not the primary element. 
The opening Bank Heist in Hello High Water, written by Sheridan and directed by David McKenzie, has no dialogue at all. But we feel the tension through the incredible long take that shows us everything and sets up all the key players of this scene without cutting. This level of filmmaking complexity and expertise is something that Sheridan hasn't quite been able to recreate with this scene in Wind River. Because for me, the scene doesn't make as much sense if you take away the dialogue, especially in this bit. Why are you flanking me? What are you talking about? The fuck do you think I'm talking about? You got us on three sides. Get your hand off that weapon. This is private property. Don't you know? That said, the visual storytelling is still pretty on point. And if I muted everything from here on, I think that you would still have a good idea of what is going on. Although I may seem really critical and negative about these films, I actually really love them, especially with River. I think that coming from a writing background does have a ton of advantages. The main one being that these directors will have a much better connection and understanding of their scripts than if they were to be directed by someone else. The fact that there isn't anything too fancy about the filmmaking, the camera work and all that, and the fact that these films are more reliant on dialogue and acting, makes us feel almost as if we're watching a play. Best example of this is Manchester by the Sea, written and directed by Kenneth Lonergan, or Lady Bird, written and directed by Greta Gerwig. Of course, the filmmaking on display in these films is not quite as impressive as something like The Shape of Water or Blade Runner 2049, but what this level of dialogue and acting achieves, as I've just mentioned, is that we almost forget that we are watching a film and that we are just watching these people's lives. Now, of course, there have been writers turned directors who have, with incredible success, been able to tell incredible stories, both with great dialogue and visuals, which is why I would like to spend the rest of this video talking about Alex Garland. Coming from a writing background, he's done a lot of films with Danny Boyle. Garland, as many of us know, tried his hand at directing with 2015's Ex Machina. A keen ear will have noticed that I have been playing a portion of the score from Ex Machina for the last couple of minutes as my own little bit of foreshadowing. Pretty proud of myself there. And I think that many of us will agree that Ex Machina was one of the best films of 2015, as it was able to combine visuals and dialogue in such an organic way. More recently, however, Garland took this to the next level when he made one of the best films of this year so far, Annihilation. This is yet another brilliant example of dialogue and visuals, combining to make an incredibly character-driven, complex, but most importantly, cinematic film. 